Okay. Um, we can go ahead and get started then. Okay, so we'll start with some introductions here. My name is Carmel. Um, I am a planning specialist within community and economic development here at Ramsey County, and I'm joined by Ella Mitchell, and I'll let her introduce or introduce herself. Yes, hi, Ella Mitchell. I'm a redevelopment manager um, within CED at Ramsey County, and um, we'll be here talking about um, critical corridors, but Carmel and I are also uh, available to talk about other CED programs and projects as well. Yeah, and as Ella said, this uh, webinar is being recorded um, and you can view it again later if you'd like to at our program website listed here, ramseycounty.us slash critical corridors. Uh, there is a Q&A function. So if you look in your screen, there's a small kind of like thought bubble um, Q&A and you can feel free to click on that, ask your question and um, Ella will be kind of looking at that and be able to kind of bring up questions either throughout this presentation or towards the end as well, um, if any questions come up for you. And also these questions um, will be compiled into a FAQ document that will be posted onto the program website. So you'll be able to see those again later as well. So kind of just starting off here with, oop, went too far, there you go. Um, just starting off here with the HRA levy. Um, it is the funding source for the Critical Corridors program, which we are doing our uh, webinar on today. Um, the housing development solicitations, the emerging and diverse developers program that we have here through CED, site assessment grants, and also our first home down payment assistance. So that's kind of just a couple of things that the HRA levy funds um, here at CED and started in 2022. Um, and so eligibility for these programs are limited to the HRA area of operation. And there's more info available on that on ramseycounty.us slash HRA. And that's something that you can click into as well. And I'll just mention, you know, that currently the HRA levy area of operation is all of uh, Ramsey County with the exception of the city of North St. Paul. Um, so if you have a project in the city of North St. Paul, unfortunately, that is not eligible for these programs that are funded through the HRA levy. Um, feel free to reach out with us to, to us to talk about that more if you have questions. Thank you. So kind of just starting off here with Ramsey County's um, ECI, Economic Competitiveness and Inclusion Plan. And so this program, um, Critical Corridors, kind of stems from this ECI plan. And it has several strategies which are, which are highlighted on this next slide here. Um, uh, that strat strategy one, kind of ensuring place-based inclusion, create resilient and equitable communities. And it's to foster these inclusive economic development within county transit, economic and cultural corridors. And then also strategy two in fostering economic competitive competitiveness innovation and transformation, and kind of developing these pathways to entrepreneurship and Black, Latinx, Asian, and Indigenous business ownership. So our Critical Corridors programs for the spring kind of centered on planning and on our commercial corridor initiative kind of have these two strategies in mind. And so a brief overview of our Critical Corridors program, our goals are to support redevelopment projects, to boost connectivity between transportation, housing, and jobs, create more compact walkable environments, enhance pedestrian access and safety and connection with redevelopment, and support vibrant business districts. So I mentioned earlier um, all the different programs that we have within Critical Corridors. This spring, um, we will be opening up applications for our planning and our commercial corridors initiative programs. The development and infrastructure will happen later on in the fall in about September here. So we are kind of just these two bolded bullet points. Um, kind of these are the programs that you can apply for starting this Wednesday. 
And so selection priorities that we have for these programs are redevelopment initiatives that intensify land use along key corridors, especially those that reduce space used for parking and improve access to transit, facilitate the development of multifamily housing, such as zoning changes, uh, promote development activity in disinvested areas, improve pedestrian or bicycle infrastructure, and propel nearby development without displacement of any residents or businesses. And I'll just mention, I think that, that that list of selection priorities, you know, those are some good things to keep in mind if you're submitting an application, um, you know, keep these in mind as you're responding to your answer or trying to decide whether your project is a good fit. Um, because these are really like the overall um, goals around redevelopment um, for these programs. So just a reminder that this is kind of a, a key part to um, think about as you're putting together an application. And so kind of just a brief, uh, I guess, slide on kind of what are critical corridors. These are major transportation, economic, and cultural corridors. Um, we have a map on that program web website that kind of shows you, you can kind of click on it. Um, it's towards the right of your screen um, and you'll be able to see kind of all the different uh, corridors that we have on there. And uh, this map was created um, that serves community hubs for housing, jobs, services, and amenities, provide access to daily activities and destinations, and provide opportunities for wealth creation, economic inclusion, innovation, and transformation. So um, a good way to see if the project that you want to apply for, um, or the project I mean that you are proposing is within a critical corridor, then you can uh, just click on that map and be able to see kind of that. And so. Yeah, and I'll just mention, you know, so the green areas shaded here are all the critical corridors eligible areas in this screenshot. It's a pretty broad, um, you know, eligibility. So likely, you know, it's, it basically just excludes single family neighborhoods. But if you, um, like Carmel said, you can see the map on the program website to, to double check that your project is in a critical corridor. Um, but as you can see, yeah, it's a a lot of green on that map. So you probably are in an eligible area. Okay, and then this is just kind of a slide that um, reiterates what I mentioned earlier. So this spring, 2024, we have applications opening this Wednesday, March 6th for our planning and commercial corridor initiative. Um, and so applications will be open for four weeks and will close on Wednesday, April 3rd with award decisions in about May or June here. And then as stated before, the development and infrastructure program will be open in September later on this year with decisions in November. And so we'll go into kind of specifics for these programs here. And so the planning program and so if you were already knew about kind of critical corridors, it's kind of just our third year, I believe, um, that we are doing this. And we have renamed our planning program from pre-development planning. So it's the same, same thing. We just wanted to be a little bit more clear and kind of precise about what we meant by planning. And so the overall purpose of this program is to assist local communities in planning for equitable redevelopment and public realm improvements along transit, economic and cultural corridors, facilitate pedestrian, bicycle and transit access, as well as connect residents to housing, jobs, destinations, while furthering environmental, public health, racial equity and economic prosperity goals. And so eligible applicants for this uh, planning program specifically our cities, housing, economic development, port authorities, watershed districts, park districts, and other public agencies and community-based nonprofits. Uh, we give maximum grant requests of 50,000. Um, and the timing of this program is that for any activities that you are proposing in your application, they have to be completed by June 30th of next year, 2025 with um, activities completed 
prior to the award, which awards happen in about May or June of this year, anything that happen happens before the, that award date are not eligible for reimbursement. But yeah. And I'll just say that, you know, for both the planning program and the commercial corridor initiative, they each have about $100,000 of funding available. So as you can see, you know, it's a pretty small amount. Um, that maximum um, grant request is 50,000. There isn't a minimum grant request, um, but typically the awards in the past have been about between 25 and 50,000. And so here's a list of eligible activities, um, land use plans, redevelopment fe feasibility studies or concept plans, market analyses, uh, infrastructure planning and conceptual design, land use and zoning studies that align with the program priorities listed in a previous slide of ours, um, and also equitable development policy or plan development. And so this list of activities, uh, you'll be able to see them if you are on our program website. There's also a kind of a guidelines PDF that has the same list. And so you'll be able to see it on there as well but it's here on this slide as well. And so just wanted to share that here. Yeah, and I and then just to make the point here, you know, I think we have a pretty broad um, list of kind of planning activities that are eligible. Um, again, I, I do wanna just emphasize that this is like a redevelopment program. And so, especially if you're looking at some of those infrastructure planning um, uh, uh, activities that are eligible, I think it's just really important to make sure that you're making a connection to um, redevelopment, you know, um, while they might technically be eligible, um, pl planning activities under that list that don't have a connection to redevelopment probably won't um, be as competitive given kind of the scoring criteria for the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then ineligible activities here is organization staff time, capital costs and equipment, road centric planning activities, any general or routine infrastructure planning, traffic or parking studies without parking reduction goals, site plans, and any other soft costs that weren't listed in those eligible activities lists in the previous slide. And so again, um, just want to make sure that this the pro program goal being redevelopment. So some examples here of previous awards that we've given uh, in the past two rounds is uh, City of Falcon Heights having a corridor study to identify potential redevelopment sites along Larpenter and Snelling. And then also City of New Brighton's uh, parking study with the goal of reducing parking minimums to encourage development and also have that um, kind of parking uh, ordinance, which I know went out uh, last just December, so pretty recently here too. And then you can read through um, the other previous awards that were given as well here on this slide. Okay. And I'll keep going here if no one has any questions at all, but feel free to ask questions as they come up for you. So moving on to the Commercial Corridor Initiative. This is our second um, Critical Corridors program that is open as well, um, starting this Wednesday. So this will be also kind of through Zoom grants and we'll kind of share what that looks like, kind of those two application portals so that you um, are clear on that. And so the program purpose of Commercial Corridor Initiative is to strengthen suburban small business districts by supporting thriving main streets, investing in pathways to entrepreneurship for racially and ethnically diverse communities. And so eligible applicants for this specific program is suburban Ramsey County entities. So um, these are not to St. Paul specifically, but this is for suburban um, entities of Ramsey County, uh, except for the exclusion of um, city of North St. Paul. And so this includes cities, associated development authorities, business coalitions, chambers of commerce, and nonprofits. 
Again, the maximum grant request for this is 50,000 and there is no minimum request at either. And uh, as Alice mentioned earlier, um, we have about 100,000 for this commercial corridor initiative set aside as well. So kind of 100,000 for planning and 100,000 for commercial corridor initiative um, to um, have people request. And then also the timing for this, it's similar to that planning program. Um, activities funded need to be completed by June 30th of next year. And activities completed prior to that May, June award are not eligible for reimbursement. And here is a list of eligible activities, business recruitment activities, establishment of small business incubators, district-wide planning, design, uh, marketing, branding, and promotion initiatives, design and implementation of wayfinding, signage, street furniture, or other pu public health, pu excuse me, public realm enhancements, and any technical assistance um, to support business activities. And then we also want to kind of share too that any projects that support business districts and may not be listed in these eligible activities, kind of these bullet points that we have here, uh, feel free to reach out to staff, to me or to Ella. Uh, we'll have our emails in the, at the end of these slides here um, to see if any other possible activities and ideas that you might have uh, meets the program kind of objectives and kind of get that go ahead for us um, on whether it is a good fit, so. And then ineligible activities, again, is organization staff time, parking lot improvements, activities for sites without public frontage, activities that benefit a single business, administration, overhead, and business operations support, and events. So here is a list of previous awards that we've had. Um, with the Rice and Larpenter Alliance, and they did a lot of business facade improvements, uh, subgrants to small businesses, and installation of wayfinding and signage along Rice and Larpenter. And then also, um, well, I guess you can see kind of a range of different things here, and that's why we want to open it up to all of you as well. Um, if you have any possible other ideas for these commercial corridor initiative um, grants. And so, yeah. Okay, now we'll move on to the application and evaluation process of this. And so the application process, um, we wanna make sure that you review these program guidelines. There's uh, screenshots here on the right with these pictures. And so again, these you can find on our program web website at ramseycounty.us slash critical corridors. Uh, you'll be able to access our Zoom grants kind of portal where we have these applications. And so we accept applications through Zoom grants and we encourage um, any pre-application meetings um, and you can email me here and I have my email right there to schedule a time just to make sure that um, you are a right fit for these programs that you might be applying to and just kind of hear about your project. Um, and so kind of key dates to keep in mind here are the solicitation opens this upcoming Wednesday on March 6th. Uh, with a four-week application period that will close on Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024, and these award decisions coming in about May or June um, of this year. And so uh, required materials, there are uh, application questions within Zoom grants in itself, um, and the Critical Corridors Project Information, this is an attachment um, and we will have kind of like a template attachment that you'll be able to see in that Zoom Grants portal that will just simply be an Excel spreadsheet that has project schedule, cost estimates, deliverables, and outcomes. And I can actually probably share kind of a quick screenshot or not screenshot, but I can share my screen as to what that might look like 
here in a bit. Um, let me do that just a second here. But and while Carmel's doing that, I'll just say that the you know the application questions those are really the core basis for evaluation. I think that that's where um, we you can really tell a story about how your um, initiative aligns with the program goals. So just to um, those will be available when the application opens on Wednesday, so you can see them. Okay, I'm almost there. Computer is just being a little bit slow, but we are here. And I'll share my screen again here. And so that template, oh, whoops, didn't click share. There you go. Um, and so this template um, is our, just kind of what we mentioned earlier, the project schedule, cost estimates, deliverables and outcomes. And we kind of just ask applicants to fill this out and upload it into that Zoom grants portal. And so it's pretty um, self-explanatory here. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to email either me or Ella. Um, in filling this out. And so that's kind of a, just a quick overview of what that looks like there. And I'll go back to the PowerPoint presentation now. Okay. Okay, and then there are other attachments as well, um, and these are additional materials. Um, this is map of proposed project site or area, letters of community support, local government resolution of support, or any other relevant supporting documentation that you might have um, when you answer kind of those narrative questions um, in Zoom grants, and you'd like to provide kind of some additional materials, you can do that as well and upload things so uh, yeah and a, a couple of things I might mention there is you know especially if your um, initiative is building on other plans or other work that's been done it's really helpful to um, see that if there's other community engagement or things that have, you've done to kind of that have been previous steps in what you're working on that's very helpful um, I think another thing especially specifically for the commercial corridor initiative if you're asking for funding for facade improvements um, it's very helpful to have a, a letter showing that the property owner, if the property owner is not the same as the business owner, is um, supportive of those. So, um, you know, if you have other questions about those, let us know. But I think in general, just attaching what you think um, is kind of relevant background information is, is always welcome. Mm -hmm. And then moving on here to evaluation. So we have different categories um, that we evaluate on. Um, and so we have a review panel of mostly CED, um, CED reviewers. So, so community and economic development um, staff that we have, and then also uh, other staff um, within Ramsey County and outside organizations um, as well as needed. And so, um, we want to make it kind of uh, as interdisciplinary as possible to be able to review these applications because there's so many things that go into it. And so uh, we base it on kind of project outcomes and opportunity, uh, placemaking and transit oriented development or public realm, uh, community engagement and racial equity, capacity and readiness of a project, and then just the overall application in general. And so that's kind of the audience that is kind of seeing these applications as it comes in. And we also want to mention too that uh, there's parity in overall um, HRA levy funding between St. Paul and suburban, count suburban Ramsey County cities that is also considered and kind of plays a factor into our evaluation as well. And I'll just say that we, um, in our guidelines, which we've mentioned that are available in PDF form on the Critical Corridors website, um, this is new this round. We actually have a little bit more detail about those these evaluation categories. So I'd encourage you, um, again, if you're submitting an application to take a look at uh, the second page of the guidelines documents, which will talk a little bit more about 
um, the types of things that are evaluated. Um, it's not a, a total exhaustive list, but I think it gives an idea of the kinds of things that we're looking at um, during that evaluation process. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then here it's kind of just a visual representation of our application timeline again. Our info session today um, happening right now on March 4th. Uh, our solici solicitation opening this upcoming Wednesday, closing on April 3rd, and then with award decisions in May uh, slash June of this year. So there you go. And then we also want to mention, uh, we have other multiple solicitations also opening, um, or open right now, I mean, within community and economic development. That's our housing development solicitation, our CDBG community development block grant, public public services and housing program solicitation, our site assessment grants, grants excuse me. Um, and then we also have upcoming soon um, on March 15th, which I think is next week, um, is our environmental response fund uh, applications as well. Okay, and that is the end of our presentation. And you can see Ella and I's emails right there. Um, if you have any questions at all, or if you want to set up that pre-application uh, meeting. And I see one question actually already right now. And Ella, did you say you wanted to answer this? Yeah, or? I yeah. can answer this one. So, so we had a question, is any weight given to the use of matching funds in the evaluation process? Um, and that's a great question. Matching is funds are not required, um, but we, we yes, I think it, it may be evaluated, um, you know, consider showing, you know, that the um, entity has some, uh, you know, is putting their funding behind it. I think it could be considered, um, but again, it's not required. And we can hang on a little bit longer in case there's any other questions um, about these programs. Uh, happy to answer them. I think um, we, you know, especially before the application opens on Wednesday, we can be um, talk a little bit more freely about, um, you, you know, potential applications and uh, questions about competitiveness. We might be able to speak to a little bit more, but once that application opens, um, we really have to restrict our feedback to just kind of eligibility and, and some of the um, basic requirements. And we can't talk as much about competitiveness. So if you are interested in learning more about, um, yeah, how kind of competitive your application might be, uh, definitely reach out to us as soon as possible. Um, and we can try to fit in um, time to talk with you today or tomorrow. Also, if you would rather um, unmute rather than type your question, we can do that as well and let you um, talk. So we want to make sure we get um, all questions that people might have. Um, so we can do that for you as well. Um, and again, so I, I think we're well, wait another B in case there's more questions, but we will, um, you know, if you have to jump off, we will post, um, you know, the one question we received and any, any other questions we do receive later um, will be posted on our website under the FAQ section. Um, so you don't have to worry about missing the answers if anything else comes up. And thank you all for attending. Yeah, thank you so much.